Hi everyone, my name is Trevor Jones. In 2010, I got started in astrophotography taking pictures using my smartphone and my point and shoot camera through a manual Dobsonian telescope. I would take pictures of the moon and the planets and it just blew me away and really got me started. By 2012, I was photographing deep sky objects like the Andromeda Galaxy using a DSLR camera and telescope. Today, I spend every clear night possible capturing new deep sky objects and improving my skills night after night. What are you doing? What? Come here. Are you gonna sit with me? Astrophotography covers a broad area of interest from planetary photography of the moon and the planets to nightscapes that include terrestrial details and the Milky Way to deep sky astrophotography through a telescope of faint nebulae and galaxies. Each of these areas has their own challenges, with deep sky astrophotography probably being the most difficult. Wide angle nightscape photography of the Milky Way and the stars offers a similar experience to landscape photography in terms of traveling and setting up a stationary tripod and long exposures, whereas deep sky astrophotography using ultra long exposures and longer focal lengths is a completely different experience altogether and it's much more involved. So if you're just getting started, what experience is necessary or an asset to, to move things along forward? If you have any experience with astronomy and looking through telescopes, that's a huge advantage and of course photography in general. Although I had no experience in either of those disciplines going in and it all worked out fine for me. Understanding how a DSLR camera or a mirrorless camera works is very important. There's a lot to learn there if you've never used a, a full manual camera like that before. And there's enough to learn in this hobby to deal with guiding and tracking and polar alignment without having to figure out what ISO settings mean or aperture, f-stop, f-ratio, all of that. So if you understand how a manual camera works, that's a, you have a huge advantage over a lot of people that are getting started. The other side of the coin is the image processing. It's pretty extensive in astrophotography. So if you're used to editing photos in Photoshop for photography, again, that's a huge advantage going in. I'll say that's probably the one leg up I had on most others when it comes to starting out in astrophotography. I was really comfortable using Photoshop early on, so I didn't have to learn that as well as everything else. So what equipment do you actually need early on? First of all, a DSLR camera or mirrorless camera with manual control is a must. Any camera lens will do, including the kit lens that comes with many entry-level DSLRs, and actually shorter focal lengths are better early on. Taking photos at night requires a completely different approach than it does when you take photos in the daytime or using a flash. In a nutshell, we take incredibly long exposure images in the dark and then pull out faint details in the processing. Most point and shoot cameras or phone cameras just weren't designed for this type of photography, which is why I said you need a camera with full manual control. So how long will it take to produce a nice image? That really depends on the equipment that you start out with and the road that you take. Some roads will lead you down a path with a wall at the end for you to bang your head against. There are some key recommendations I wanna make early on to avoid this. I personally didn't produce an acceptable deep sky image for about six months after investing in the proper gear, but I really did get lucky in the path that I took because it's, a, it's probably the best one for beginners to take. So how much will it all cost? Astrophotography is expensive, there's no denying that. But fortunately, the road that I recommend you take for beginners is a little more affordable than some what others will tell you. Mainly because I suggest that you get a small, compact telescope to start with. So what gear should you actually invest your hard-earned money in? A reliable tracking mount that's easy to use and you can understand it. A compact apochromatic refractor telescope and an affordable DSLR camera. Everybody's got an opinion about what equipment is best to start out with, but I think it's important that you invest in something that's easy to use and that you understand that you're willing to put some time into. Few people will argue that starting out with a compact wide field refractor and an equatorial tracking mount is a bad idea. In the early stages, polar alignment, finding targets and focus will be the most challenging. A compact refractor telescope is similar to a telephoto camera lens in this regard, and it makes all three of those aspects easier. 
Because it's so wide field, it means it's much more forgiving on tracking accuracy. So even if your polar alignment is a little off, your pointing accuracy, all of those things are a lot more forgiving when you're at a wide field of view. As soon as you go too deep, things become much more difficult. If you've noticed, I've got some equipment set up here and these are great items to invest in early on when you're getting started. I know that a lot of people that are getting into astrophotography are transitioning from landscape nature photographers and then they start shooting the night sky and they wanna take these long exposure images. And tracking is the difference between what you're used to on your stationary tripod and uh, these long exposure images you've seen. So here's two very proven models here, the Skywatcher Star Adventurer Pro and the Ioptron Skyguider Pro. Attached here is a small refractor telescope, like I mentioned, this is the Red Cat 51 with a 250 millimeter focal length. And then on this one, it's just the Rokinon 135 millimeter camera lens. Both of these are extremely capable setups that can capture amazing deep sky images because they can take long exposure tracked images of up to three minutes or even a little longer using a DSLR camera attached. So these mounts take care of the tracking and they follow along with the night sky. But what a lot of people have trouble with is finding targets. So the next step up from a mount like this is a go-to mount with a keypad where you can actually type in the object you wanna see and it will automatically slew to it, which is extremely handy. That's in another level of equatorial mounts though where they get a lot more expensive, but you can also start mounting telescopes to it. If you're at this stage, Finding targets is as simple as using an app on your phone. I use Stellarium. You isolate where a target is, you use the stars in the night sky, and with a test exposure of about 30 seconds, you should be able to find the rough area of it because you're using this wide field telescope. And then you can frame it up nicely and start taking longer exposure images. At this stage, I don't recommend that you get into auto guiding yet. That's something you'll need when you step up to a bigger telescope like this one. This is a 73 millimeter refractor telescope with a DSLR attached and a guide scope and a small guide camera on top. So this requires a more robust mount and computer control for automating the imaging sequence and all that. Whereas these ones, you could just use an intervalometer or a remote shutter release cable to set a sequence of exposures. When you put the camera in bulb mode, you can go beyond 30 seconds and shoot one, two, three minute exposures. And then in the processing, you wanna stack those. If you're interested in the image processing, there's a lot to cover there. I do have an image processing guide that took me almost a year to put together. It's in the description. It's using a program called Deep Sky Stacker and Adobe Photoshop. It's the process I've used to create all my images. I refer back to the guide for every new image that I process. So that's there if you want it. So where should you go for help or advice? Because there's a lot of questions that are gonna come up. The online forums are great if you're someone that's resourceful like me where you'd rather find the answer before asking. Forums like Cloudy Nights, you can search for the exact question you have if it's about a particular piece of gear and chances are someone's already asked that question and it's been answered. So you can find a lot of great information there. There's a lot of great YouTube videos and there are you know, more and more every year. There's a lot of great YouTube channels. Go back, watch some of my old videos because I've, I've covered a lot of stuff over the years and maybe that will help you. But the absolute best way to get advice is to go join your astronomy club if you have one because there'll be members there that are into astrophotography, I guarantee. And that hands-on advice, back and forth question and answer is so powerful. Go to a star party, talk to people there. People are always willing to help because we're all nuts about this hobby. So the next steps from here, like I said, a setup just like this, that's why these are set up. These are the starting points. This is what spurred on my addiction for astrophotography. This is what's gonna get you results early on and get pictures like the ones that I share on my channel. I hope this has been useful to you. If it has, please leave a like and subscribe to Astro Backyard. Until next time, clear skies.